Today I'm going to show you how to install uh, Ubuntu into a virtual machine. I showed you in my last video how to install VirtualBox on your computer, so you should have already uh, done that one. And uh, so basically at this point you should just be ready to open it up. Uh, VirtualBox, uh, Oracle VirtualBox, that's what I was thinking right there. So uh, just open VirtualBox and you'll see screen this screen and what we're gonna do is create a new virtual machine I have Ubuntu already downloaded which I also showed in a previous video I'll have links to both of these in the description if you haven't done them yet so uh, what I have right here is the Ubuntu desktop ISO so the file that you need is a dot ISO there I guess there's a couple other file formats it could be in but I can almost guarantee you that it will be a dot ISO and I have the 64-bit version if you have x86 or whatever it says here, that's fine too. They both work exactly the same way. So um, so what you do here is you hit new to create a new virtual machine. And then in the name, you can name it anything. I'm going to name it Ubuntu, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, it is going to be Linux, and it is going to be Ubuntu. I don't think it really cares what version it is. No, it doesn't. So uh, actually, I'm going to choose Ubuntu 64-bit because I have the 64-bit version. If yours says x86, then you have the 32-bit version. You can just leave it on regular. I don't think this makes a huge difference, but uh, just select what you have, and then just hit Next here. Uh, this is pretty important, uh, how much memory you give it. I have 8 gigs of RAM in this computer, so I can give it quite a bit. I could even give it like 3 gigs if I wanted to, which I probably will. If you uh, 3 gigs is actually 384 megabytes. Or 3082? I can't remember. But yeah, um, basically, uh, on your computer, it, this will be how much RAM you have. It'll like peak out. If you have a lesser computer, you might have 2 gigs or even 1 gig. Uh, a better computer will have like 4 gigs, 8 gigs, even 16. You shouldn't really give it more than a quarter of your RAM. So, uh, like, I'm going to give it 3 gigs out of 8 gigs. That's fine, like, that's a little over a third, I guess, but uh, I would say absolutely no more than half, but uh, it's just basically like your computer will run slowly if you give it too much, and that will cause the virtual machine to run slowly, like they have to kind of share the RAM, so definitely put this somewhere at half or less, I would suggest, but give it as much as you feel like comfortable like if you have one gig I would put it at 512 if you have two gigs then I would put it at like 756 if you have eight gigs like 3082 so and if you have 16 you can put it up to eight gigs like whatever uh, just less than half um, then you have the options here to create a virtual hard drive if you already have a virtual hard drive you can use that but if you already do then you should know how to use it um, so like do not add a virtual or just leave the create a virtual hard drive this basically creates a file on your computer that the virtual machine is going to use to store all its files so we're gonna um you can just leave this as the default if you knew what these others were then you could select one of them but we're just going to go with the default uh one that some people might be interested in is the parallels hard disk parallels is used uh on, I think it's a Mac uh, program, like exclusively Mac for running Windows in the Mac operating system. So some people might be interested in that one, but we're just going to use the VirtualBox disk image. Then uh, the dynamically allocated versus fixed size. If it, you choose the dynamic option and you choose a maximum size for the hard drive, say 20 gigabytes, then when it's not going to be 20 gigabytes, it's going to start off as like a few gigabytes because of the installation of the uh, operating system and then as you add more files it'll grow uh, but up to that maximum well a fixed size will instantly take it that much so if you allocate 20 gigs to uh, the Ubuntu operating system then that 20 gigs is instantly taken and you can't ever like uh, you can't ever change that or well it uh, it will instantly be 20 gigs even if the operating system isn't use it so it'll use space without really needing it so uh, that's kind of a a, uh, a decision you can make it doesn't really matter on either one but uh, like it says a fixed hard drive file may take longer to create on some systems but is faster to use so I'm gonna use the fixed size because that's my preference 
It doesn't really matter which one you use, uh, but fixed size is going to be a little faster. Dynamic isn't going to use si uh, isn't going to use storage unless you're actually like using it. Like if you actually if Ubuntu was only 10 gigs, then you're only using 10 gigs. Where if the fixed size, if you set it to 20 gigs and Ubuntu is only using 10, it's still going to use 20. So, but I like the slight speed increase, so I'm going to leave it at fixed size. Um, then uh, you need to select the hard drive size in megabytes. I am going to put it up to uh, 20 gigs because I have some extra space available. To see how much hard drive space you have, just click on computer on start and then go to computer, and it's going to show you your hard drives here. I have two hard drives in here actually, and I have 114 gigs free on this 256 gig hard drive, and then this one's just kind of a backup hard drive. So uh, on this one. I have 114 gigs free, so I can be, feel pretty comfortable using 20 gigs. If you only had like 20 gigs free, do not use 20. Like, make sure you use, always leave at least like 10 gigs free on your hard drive, or I'd say at least 15% of your hard drive free, like absolute maximum. So, uh, like, don't ever really go over that, otherwise your computer is going to be slowed way down. So, depending on how much you think you're going to use in it, you can allocate it. I'm going to give it 20 gigs, so that's actually kind of plenty like unless you're storing, planning on storing like big files in there 20 should be all you need but this is how much you have to work with so I'm gonna choose 20 gigs um, actually you can even just type in the size over here well okay 20.0 gigs I don't know why it won't let me delete the 8 there we go okay 20 gigabytes so I'm gonna hit create and it's gonna for mine, it's really quick creating it because I have a solid state hard drive, like a actually a very, very good solid state hard drive. For you, it may take a while to create. Like it could take even like an hour or something, depending on the speed. Um, so just be patient. Like you do have a bar here that shows how fast it's going, but it is actually allocating the space right now, so it's going to be taking up 20 gigs on my computer right now. And we might even be able to see that happening if I uh, go back to the. See, I had 110 gigs free, and I only have 104. Uh, I only have 94.1, and it might even be less now. Okay, so it already took up all my 20 gigs. So now I only have 994.1 gigabytes out of my 256. So. Okay, so now you've created your virtual hard drive, and you're ready to install your operating system. Like I said, I am using this. Uh, Ubuntu desktop ISO right here. That's basically your install disk. You could burn this direct directly to a disk using uh, image burn. I think I have image burn installed. I do. Um, if you were going to install this on a regular computer instead of a virtual machine, then you would just burn this to a disk using image burn. Like you just say write image file to disk, and if you have a CD in there, then it'll burn it to the disk. You don't need to do that with a virtual machine. It can make basically a virtual disk drive. So it just mounts this as like a virtual disk. So to do that, you can just double click on the uh, thing on the left, like the virtual hard drive, and just hit OK here. And then it's going to ask you what you want to use as your startup disk. Uh, this is like uh, what you want to use to install the operating system. So this is the disk image that so we're going to go and find that so I have it in my uh, like if you had a CD then you could actually still use that so if you had already burnt this to a CD you can pop it in your disk drive and then choose host drive D to burn it off from but mine is in my downloads folder and it's this Ubuntu uh, desktop and I'm going to show you how to use the alternate install in a different video. It has just more features. The desktop install is what I'm going to use in this video. It's just easier to use, basically. So hit start. And then it's going to boot up, and now it automatically boots from the disk when you do this. And you'll notice that like it doesn't take up the full screen when you do that. That's because we don't have any drivers installed or anything, so it's going to act like that until we actually get the uh, the operating system installed and some drivers put on it. So, uh, And then you just have to give it a minute while it boots up, and it is booting from the disk right now. So we'll just give it a minute.
And yours might take a little bit to start up. Uh, I'm not sure what that error is, but I might be able to get past it. We'll see. I'm still booting. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure why the error came up, so we just won't worry about it. Um, and then it should boot to a screen where it then gives us some options, like asking if we would like to, inst if I'd like to install it. Okay, see, so we're getting there now. So it can take a little while to boot. If your computer's a bit slower, it might take a little while longer. And it's going to give us some options, like uh, we're actually, it's going to boot to the Ubuntu desktop. These disks can be used, and that ISO can be used to just boot live from, like where you're not changing any files, but you can still use the operating system. And if you have certain Wi-Fi cards and everything, it can even go on the internet. So it's uh, it's very cool. Like you can't write files to it, but you can still use it as the operating system. So we're, we're getting there now. Um, Okay, so it's going to pop up with these options. You can hit Try Ubuntu, and then it'll just go to the desktop, and it'll allow you to use all the stuff that's included with Ubuntu, and you can play around with it a little bit. We're going to choose the Install Ubuntu option. And this is going to allow us to then choose all the settings for uh, installing to the hard drive. Okay, so these are the, it wants at least 4.4 gigabytes available of hard drive space, and we chose 20. I should have mentioned that earlier, that you, you want to choose at least 8 gigs, I would say is minimum. Uh, but we chose 20, so we're all good. My computer's plugged into a power source. If your computer died while this was installing, wonky things would happen, so definitely, like, be sure that it won't turn off. Um, you don't necessarily need to be in, uh, connected to the internet, but I would recommend it. I'm not going to do the download updates while installing because I want to uh, I want this video to go a little bit faster where this could take a while so uh, but for you I'd recommend uh, checking that just it's going to take a while longer for it to install than it will for me. I would suggest install third party software that's going to just add some extra uh, tools for you to be able to like play certain videos and stuff like that. And it you can install this later, but it's uh it's some good stuff that I would recommend installing. They just have to ask you if you want to install it legally. So okay, so we're gonna hit continue at the bottom after you've checked that. Uh, there's erase and install disk install Ubuntu or something else. If you have stuff on this virtual hard drive already, like if you were trying to dual boot a virtual machine, which I can't imagine why you would do that. Uh, if you choose this option, it's going to erase everything. So if you're on, if you're trying to install Ubuntu on your regular computer too right now, following along, and not just in a virtual machine, this will erase everything that you have, this option. So if you don't know what you're doing, uh, I would not even recommend choosing either of these right now and go to like UbuntuForums.com and kind of learn about this type of thing because this will seriously delete everything. So we're going to choose this option because we're installing it just on a new hard drive by itself. So, But it would delete any, everything if there was anything else on it. So we're going to hit continue. Uh, here, like, if you had multiple hard drives installed and this was on a regular computer, there would be different options here. But we're just installing a virtual machine, so there's only one, and that is what we want to install it to. And we want to use the entire disk. If you were partitioning it weirdly, there might be there would be a few slashes here with different things, but... You don't need to really worry about that if you're just going through the desktop installer. So then just hit install now. And this part will probably take a while. Uh, since I'm just copying files right from an ISO image to the virtual machine hard drive, it's probably going to be really fast. Yeah, you can see that it's, it's going really quick. So, uh, But yours could take up to, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, it could take even longer than that. Uh, but while you're installing, you have these options to choose from. Just choose your time zone. Like if you lived over here, just click over here and we'll move the dot. But I'm um, up in this area. We'll just go with New York. And then hit continue. Then it's going to ask you about your keyboard layout in a minute here. Keyboard layout. I'm American, so I'm going to choose the US version. And everything, like the options here, are pretty obvious. So. Uh, you can just hit continue. As long as you're in America, you can just hit continue. If you had like a weird Spanish keyboard, then you would need to choose the options there for it. Okay, for your, uh, my name is Pascal, so I'm just going to put my uh, name is Pascal. You can put it, this is basically uh, like what you're going to use to 
or actually this one's going to be what you use to log on to the computer but uh, the computer's name this is what's going to be available in the network so this can be anything doesn't really matter this one is what your computer will be seen, seen as by other computers on the network so if you named it something that isn't very professional when you take it to work and other computers like kinda see yours on the network it could cause some problems so I would recommend this is one that will be seen by the outside world so keep it a little uh, <laughs> professional uh, then pick a username it can be anything I'm just gonna leave it as my name and then f for a password uh, definitely put it as something secure but it is gonna require a uh, a password. I'm just going to put it as password, but I would recommend yours to be a bit more <laughs> secure. And then I'm just going to have login automatically, which isn't as safe, but that's up to you. Uh, encrypt my home folder. If you're really serious about uh, like keeping your stuff private and safe, then choose this option, but you should research a bit about it before you choose it. Like It basically just makes it so that if somebody else had your hard drive and tried to look at your stuff, then it's extremely difficult for them, but also that if you forgot your password, it'd be extremely difficult to get your files. So just keep that in mind if you end up choosing that option. Definitely research it a little bit first. And now it will show some uh, cool little uh, like tips and stuff like that. You can just scroll through them. There's like you can learn a little bit about how it works and everything from here. So uh, I'm just gonna pause the video here and continue it when this is actually finished. Okay, my first bar just finished of the uh, copying. I think it was it said copying something. So then it was copying all the files to the hard drive, the virtual hard drive on here. And now it's actually going to install it. I'm not sure how long this one will take, but again, I'll just pause it until this is finished and then I'll continue. At this point in mine, it's downloading and installing those extras that I showed you to check the box for earlier on. So depending on your internet speed if you and if you check that, this step might take a little while. So again, I'll pause it and come back when it is finished. Okay, when your installation is actually finished, then you should have a window that looks like this. Uh, like, it'll just say restart now. I am at 36 minutes since I started this video, so yours might take a bit longer. Like I said, I have a really nice hard drive in this machine, which makes the installation go a lot faster. So yours could take up to an hour or two, and also your internet could be faster or slower, and that's really going to affect the time, So because I have kind of slow internet here. So uh, just when it is finished, just hit restart now and then it's going to reboot into uh, the virtual machine in the uh, like in the same window so like you can just leave it up like don't hit the X up here or anything like just just wait and it might do some wonky stuff like you can see that's looking kind of weird here right now so and then uh, at this point hit enter and then hit enter again uh, for, or just hit OK here. And then it's going to boot up. Uh, <clears throat> depending on how fast your computer is, this will take a little longer or a little faster. Like a virtual machine can take a lot of your computer's resources. So if you have a slow computer, it's going to be very slow. If you have a faster computer, it can be just as fast as your normal computer is. So it does make a really big difference. And now we are at the normal Ubuntu desktop. Uh, what I would do is first test your internet. I will have plenty of other videos showing you how to install uh, like Java, how to make your desktop look a, bit, a little bit different, how to install different things, how to fix your internet if it's not working. Uh, right now I have networking enabled and it's actually connected through my internet right now. Uh, like you connect the, all those uh, drivers that you said okay to while you were installing VirtualBox, they handle this kind of thing so that you don't have to connect to any wireless inside your virtual machine. It just goes through your like it's bridge to your computer uh, regular network so you don't even have to configure anything. Like I'm already on the internet, I didn't have to do anything even though I have to type in a password for my wireless internet. So uh, at this point you have Ubuntu installed. You can see it looks a little weird, like it's really small. I'm going to show you how to fix that in my next video, like just basically configuring the Ubuntu desktop. So uh, check out my next video and uh, that's pretty much all you have to do is now you have Ubuntu in a virtual machine.